Hey, how's it going everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about night 18 of the G1 Climax 33, semi-finals night, the one we've all been waiting for, and I can say for certain, without a doubt, that one of these matches was generational, so let's just jump into it. Kazuchika Okada vs Evil. When I reviewed Evil's match with Shingo, I said that was kind of the peak of Evil's heat and that they failed to capitalize on it when Shingo lost, uh, but here they reached a little bit higher peak of his heat and they didn't screw it up. A few things I want to mention before we get going, the stage setup tonight was, it felt so big time. Like, I don't know if we've had similar stage setups, but this one just felt like so grand. It was awesome. One more thing, Evil's theme is also pretty damn cool, and I just now noticed. I don't know why I didn't see that before, um, but as someone who's watching the G1 for the first time, I don't think there's anything better or harder than an Okada coin drop for a big match. Going into the big match now, we got the usual cheating spots with Evil and the House of Torture. Uh, you know, all the low blows, ref bumps, you know, all that shit. And I really enjoy that Chris Charlton always calls it the Evil Bingo card because that's just so accurate to me. Now, while I usually hate all of that, and I didn't care for it here still, especially because there were like, what, five ref bumps in total, um, it's easy to look past the monotony of it all when the crowd is this loudly against Evil. I mean, this venue was just absolutely begging for Okada to win, especially like after the House of Torture got involved and then Okada subsequently just kind of threw them out really quick. Uh, it just made them want to see him win so much more. Uh, it just kind of made them want to see him overcome all the odds that so many people already have failed to overcome. Okada clearing out the House of Torture, like I said, set us free from all of that awfulness and kind of let the end of this match breathe, and I thought it worked really well. These two guys were just going counter for counter, neither being able to land their big shots, but eventually Evil was able to hit Okada with an everything is evil, and it gave us such a good near fall. I felt my chest sink down to my toes at just the thought of Evil winning. That was a fantastic near fall. But don't worry, like I said, that's a near fall, and Okada gets that shoulder up and then hits Evil with his own finisher and then absolutely blasts him with a Rainmaker that Evil sold to perfection, and Okada scores the win here. The outcome was definitely the right decision, and I thought that this was kind of the peak of just me being afraid of Evil winning, and the crowd felt, felt the same way, you know? And it created lots of good drama that both guys played off of really well. The story of this match worked really well to kind of save it from it being another just evil shitty match, and while I can still say that I stand by the take that evil shouldn't be in this spot, uh, this match was at least watchable, and all I gotta say to end this off, thank fuck for no evil in the finals of the G1. It's real music time with Tetsuya Naito vs Will Ospreay, and throughout the last few videos I've been saying how excited I am to watch this match, just because I felt like both guys can deliver an absolutely incredible one, and my feelings were validated here because this was just that incredible. My excitement for this match was shared by the crowd, they were going absolutely insane, and they definitely gave their fair share of cheers to both guys, but it was pretty obvious who they had to win, who they wanted to go through, and it, it created an incredible environment. The anticipation just kept growing and growing as Naito did his, you know, slow taking off his entrance gear thing, and just the level that we were at as soon as the bell rang, I, I just knew that this would be different. We started slow as all Naito matches do, but we got into things proper when Osprey threw a huge chop to Naito, a pair of them actually, and he's just the best at throwing those. From the beginning of this match, you knew that Naito was aware that he couldn't outspeed Osprey, you know, it, it just kind of led to him becoming more of a counter wrestler. Uh, that was shown through when he hit Osprey with a knee when Osprey was ex expecting a hip toss and it just kind of let him take control early. He began working over Osprey's neck right from the get-go because of course he did, he sits to Naito, and he just wouldn't let up. He was so quick to go back to one of those nasty elbow shots or a really tight looking submission that just kind of set up everything that this match would end up being. Naito put Will into a submission where Osprey was just so tight in there, he had to just kind of kick his full body to the ropes, which was really cool, and once he did and, you know, got back up, Naito was left wide open for Osprey to come right back with that speed and just shut him right down. But of course, after a little bit of offense, Naito just came right back and shut him off again with a pair of nasty looking neckbreakers to the outside that just looked like they hit so hard. They also did like a replay and you could just see the ripple through Osprey's neck and shoulders and it honestly just left my neck hurting. Like, it was crazy. Another thing I wanted to point out, after that spot, you know, you could kind of see United Empire just cheering Will on and just giving him all the motivation, and I just love seeing that because it really does a good job of showing how much these guys love each other, and it's just one of those small moments that I love that I felt like I wanted to point out. But as we carry on, Will got back into the ring at 19, and Naito immediately went right back to the neck, eventually kind of setting Will up for the poison run on the top rope, and Naito, you gotta be smarter than that. There's no way that this flippy ass Brit is gonna take that shit. The flippy Brit obviously flipped right back onto his feet, and then later on he got him right back on the top rope, 
when he hit Naito with a shooting star press while he was hung up on the ropes. And it was just insane. It, it took perfect, perfect, perfect accuracy to be able to hit and not make a move like that look like shit, even though it could pretty easily look like shit. It, it was insane. There was a moment during this match where it kind of just turned into a who can hang on longer show when Naito kind of countered a Will Ospreay powerbomb into a DDT that just went so hard. It was so smooth, so fluid. I popped big time and so did the crowd, who were already loud but just raised their intensity for the rest of the match, and it just went so hard. Like I said, the rest of this match was just about who could hang on longer, and it looked like Osprey was going to falter, and just because of all the damage to his neck, um, but no, there was an elbow exchange, and Osprey just got the second wind, and it just kicked his shit into overdrive. Osprey was hitting Naito with absolutely everything he had. He got him with the Oz cutter. He got him with the hidden blade. He got him with the leap of faith even. And Naito just kept kicking out. The dude just wouldn't give up. The crowd went crazy for every single kick out, and I honestly did too. Osprey was just throwing everything at him. He was giving his everything, but Naito just wouldn't let this seemingly final G1 run slip between his fingers. He got his own second win too, just hitting Osprey with these nasty looking elbows to the neck that just hit so snug. Uh, it put Osprey down, but it didn't put him down for the count, of course. Osprey then countered that back with a rapid fire exchange of just kicks, chops, and slaps that felt like he was exhausting everything that he had left in him. I'm not sure if it was during this exchange or another one, um, but Osprey hit Naito in the face with a kick, and it just seemed like Naito didn't duck in time, and Osprey hit him clean. And it left Naito rocked, and while that's scary looking back at it, I honest to god didn't even notice during the match because Will did such a good job playing it off. I did notice that Will had started calling the match pretty loudly and pretty openly, um, but I think I can say this now knowing that he's all good. Uh, it added so much incredible drama to the finish. When Naito went in for another strike and just kind of fell over, it made the story of these guys throwing everything at each other just work so much better. At the time, I actually thought that Naito, who had a thousand yard stare on him, was kind of just putting over the fear that he could lose. Uh, looking back on it, that was just because that man was dazed, but he fought through it, and I just have to give him so much praise for that because that's crazy to be able to fight through a seeming like maybe concussion, and even when the, he was in that dazed state, he was able to hit the Destino, and I was just left in awe. It took me absolutely zero time throughout the end of this match to write down that it was a five star. The only thing that ended up taking me time was to see if I should add on any more to it because this was just next level. Let's talk about each guy individually and let's start with Will Ospreay who came up short in this one. He proved here again and throughout this entire G1 run that he's probably the best in the world right now. The speed, the agility, the selling. Ospreay just has it all and in this match he did the majority of the work against a guy who, like many said, just didn't have it, and he proved here that it doesn't matter who he goes up against, he's gonna have a banger no matter what. And honestly, the fact that he did such a good job calling and carrying the ending of the match, while Naito was seemingly knocked super loopy, that just honestly cements how legendary the guy is. Yeah, I am sad he didn't win this year's G1, just as a fan of his, even though I do understand why he didn't. Um, but I think you can absolutely make the case for him to win next year. He has so much fan support, and I think it's at the point where this guy deserves a run at the top of the card for sure. For Naito, this showed any doubters that he did, and probably will, still have an absolutely stellar match if he's asked to. I myself was skeptical of him during the G1 block stage. I wasn't sure if he still had it in him to be the top guy at the top of the card, but as the tournament has gone on, and especially right here, he's shown enough to prove to me that he absolutely still has one more good run in him. This was easily one of the best matches of the year, and I honestly probably missed so much covering it because so much happened. Um, and if you have a friend or you yourself haven't seen this match, you have to sit down or have to sit them down for a while and just put them in front of it and just watch as their eyes like go wide just at the pure excellence of all of this. Just incredible work from both guys. Osprey could be the wrestler of the year this year just because like the highest quality of his matches have just been nuts and Tetsuya Naito is someone who I've really grown fond of as the tournament has gone on he has such charisma and it's really come across especially in this match it came across that spirit that he has to just not give up on this last run and I couldn't be more excited for the final so let's just go ahead and talk about that now I went ahead and put the star ratings up on the side so you could check those out um, this finals was one that a lot of people saw coming when they saw the playoffs bracket take shape, and I think everyone should be excited for this. These guys just have so much history. Okada is Okada, and I think he can have a great match with probably anyone, and I have faith that Naito can go for another 5-star in his current form. Like, I think this match is going to be really, really good. While I don't have a preference of the winner myself, uh, it seems likely that Naito is going to get the win, and with just how loud the crowds have been for him, that's good with me. 
But until then, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Leave a like, comment, subscribe down below, and let's get hyped for what should be an incredible G1 main event. After all this time, it's going to come down to that. I have high expectations, and I'm excited to talk about it tomorrow with you guys. Um, but for right now, I hope you guys all have a good one, and uh, peace.